Uh, I usually don't bring a message on Christmas Eve because I like to just keep it musical and worshipful, but today, uh, because it's Sunday and we decided to have only one gathering tonight, uh, I do want to share a, a brief message with you. It, it should be short, um, but you know when preachers promise you they'll be short, they, they're lying, and so uh, we'll see how this goes. But for the last several Sundays, uh, we've been taking a look at the songs of Christmas. We've been singing lots of songs, and we've been delving into the scriptures and the songs that we find in the Bible. And, and as we've just been studying together, we found ourselves going to the Old Testament a lot, the, the Psalms and the prophecies from Isaiah that predate the birth of Jesus by 500 years, 600 years. And, uh, and so it, it's been a fun adventure for me and our teaching team as we've been preparing these messages. And, and I, you know, I'm a musician, so I love singing and I love song. I love song craft. One of the songs we're not going to sing tonight is, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's one of my favorites. Anybody else like that one? Who is it? Andy Williams? Am I, is that right? Andy Williams wrote that song, performed that song. Um, and this is the most wonderful time of the year, I think. It's a happy season. There's so much happiness at, at Christmas time. And I have so many happy memories. I was with my mom and dad uh, yesterday and the day before. And um, I was looking at my mom's Christmas tree. I call it my mom's Christmas tree because she is, nobody touches her Christmas tree but my mom. I mean, that is her thing. And she's 87, and still this year, she was decorating her own Christmas tree. And uh, I called her up a couple of weeks ago. She was struggling because she, she has a hard time walking and moving around. She said, I, I keep working on the Christmas tree, and I can't, I can't finish it. I said, why don't you let Julie, my sister, why don't you let her help you? And she said, no, she won't do it right. <laughs> And that took me back to when I was, when I was very young and, and mom loved to hang tinsel on the tree. Do you remember the old lead tinsel? Not the mylar stuff that, you know, just, you know, that, that lead stuff. And mom would take strand by strand, one strand, and put one strand over each branch because it had to hang perfectly. And that was so happy for her. Brought her so much happiness to have a perfectly tinseled and I remember some of my friends would grab that tinsel and they would just throw it at the tree and wherever it landed, that was happy for them, right? And so we find happiness in different things. We had a really happy thing happen to us today. We had um, our young adults group gathered together for caroling and they stopped by our house this morning and we got it on video. You got to see this. Check this out. That made me so happy. <laughs> Jody, you said, <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good time because I can't feel my fingers or toes. You said, I don't know how many houses you'd visited, but um, that, was, that was happy. Um, I want to tell you one of the things that, that makes me happy at Christmas time is people turn their hearts to giving. And uh, several weeks, I, I asked you connectors if you could give extra this Christmas time because we wanted to make sure that we could take care of, of people who had extra needs this Christmas. And of course, I, I'm talking about happiness, but the reality is there's lots of people struggling at Christmas time, right? And, and we can look around our community and we can see there's people that, that are really struggling at Christmas time. And I want to say thank you to all of you that gave generously. Uh, because we were able to help a whole bunch of people. Um, we were able to bless a bunch of people uh, this Christmas. And because you gave, um, we were able to help a single mom who's been struggling to pay her rent. And, and, uh, and she made it this month. 
Uh, we were able to help. In fact, this just happened a couple of days ago. I got a phone call about a mom who had, uh, had been hit with a terrible, terrible tragedy. And she had to move out of her home, and we had connectors there to help, and we were able to give her some money to help her with her expenses. And thank you, connectors, for making somebody's Christmas a little more joyful. And uh, Murky, is it okay if I share sure. what, hap- what, what we've done with you? Because uh, I just want to say thank you to the connectors. Murky is one of our connectors. She's been a connector for a long time. And uh, last winter, Murky's pipes burst. And uh, when, we, when we were trying to help, uh, we found out that one of the reasons her pipe burst is because she hasn't had any heat in her house for a while. And she's been heating her home with a wood stove and with, with uh, portable space heaters. So uh, there, was, there were big problems on her property, but just this week we were able to install a propane tank and get her furnace up and running. Yeah. And she has heat this, this winter. So it's a happy Christmas, Murky. Yeah. It's a happy Christmas. And, and Connectors, thank you. Thank you so much for, for, for doing this. It makes me happy, and I, th- I hope it makes all of us happy. Um, but I know that for lots of you that are here tonight, it, this is a hard season. Uh, Chris and I have lost a loved one this season, and I know many of you have as well. It's always hard during the holidays, isn't it, when there's somebody missing at the table. And, uh, and so we, we sing songs like it's the most wonderful time of the year, and maybe you say to yourself, this is a terrible time of the year. And I get it. it it's hard. When, when life is hard, the holidays are hard. But this is why we don't sing Happy to the world, the Lord. We don't sing happy to the world. We sing joy to the world because joy is not the same thing as happiness. Do you know this? I I mean, maybe you know this already instinctively in your heart, but happiness is just a feeling of well-being. And you don't feel happy when things aren't well. But did you know you can experience joy, deep, profound joy, even when things are tough in your life? Whether you're celebrating or you're grieving or, 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 or anything else is going on in your life, there's a reason that you can experience joy and there's a reason why joy is central to Christmas. It's because joy comes from the hope that Jesus brings. I want to say that again. Joy comes from the hope that Jesus brings. And here's the hope. I didn't put this on the screen, but I want you to grab onto this. This is the hope. The hope is that Jesus is going to show up for you. Hope is that Jesus is going to show up for you. The hope was fulfilled. We read about it in Luke chapter 2. And if if you've been in church for any length of time or if you've even watched the Peanuts Christmas movie, you know this part of the story. Luke writes, In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them and the glory of the Lord, Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. Say that with me. Good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. And then he told those shepherds why. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now, when the angel brought this message, these shepherds would have known immediately what he was talking about because of two key words in that message, Savior and Christ. The word Savior is the Hebrew word Yeshua, which, by the way, is also the Hebrew name of Jesus. 
And the word Christ in Hebrew is the word Messiah. And, and Yeshua and Messiah had been prophesied more than 500 years before. And when the angel made this declaration, the shepherds knew exactly what they were talking about. Jesus showed up for me. Jesus showed up for me. It's the fulfillment of the hope. Can I tell you the backstory? The promise came. The promise came in probably the darkest period of Israel's history. Israel had been conquered by their enemies. Jerusalem had been completely reduced to rubble. The city was destroyed. And the people were exiled to Babylon and to other places, and they had be, been taken off into slavery. The people who weren't killed and wiped out by the Assyrians and the Babylonians had become slaves. And the grief was all-consuming. Anybody here know what all-consuming grief feels like? Some of us have been through that. Lots of us have been through that. These people had lost everything, and their grief was bitter. And yet, because the people of Israel were a people who sing, like us connectors, they sang songs of grief. This is one of them. They would sing, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Upon the willows in the midst of it, we hung our harps. For there our captors demanded us to sing songs. And our tormentors demanded jubilation, saying, Sing for us one of the songs of Zion. And then they would say, How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? And you might be here tonight and it's difficult for you to sing too because you're in a really dark part of your life. I want you to know that you're not alone. And the Bible is full of stories of people who experience the hope of the promise of Jesus in the midst of their grief. In the midst of this mourning and this grieving in Babylon, Isaiah the prophet brought the people a song. And this is one of the earliest Christmas songs that we find in the Bible. I don't know what the melody sounds like, but we have the text. It's preserved in the prophecy of Isaiah. And it's a song of joy that came in this dark day of grief for the people of Israel. Here's the song that Isaiah brings the people. He says, how delightful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, Isaiah says, your watchmen raise their voices. They shout joyfully together, for they will see with their own eyes when the Lord restores Zion. Be cheerful, shout joyfully together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. This is a promise. This is the hope that Jesus will show up for them. Isaiah ends his song this way, the Lord has bared his holy arm. He's showing us his muscles. In the sight of all the nations, so that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. So when the angel showed up and used all this same language, I bring you good news of great joy, he was saying the promise from 500 years ago, it's fulfilled today. Jesus is showing up for you. No wonder the shepherds dropped everything and ran to find Jesus. The people had been waiting 500 years of course, they'd gone back to Jerusalem, and, and if you've been with us this last year, we taught about the return to Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the walls, but Jesus didn't come until the angels came and announced 
his coming. And the joy you can imagine, the joy that God has not abandoned us. Do you know, my friends, God has not abandoned you? God has not abandoned you. And Jesus is going to show up for you. That's where the joy comes from. It comes from the hope that Jesus brings. And here's the thing. You can choose joy when you trust that God will keep his promises. I've been walking alongside a couple of connectors for the last 18 months. And, and those of you, if this is your church home, you know Greg and Tosh and the challenge that they have been walking through. Uh, if you don't know them, uh, Greg fell from some scaffolding 20 feet. Am I remembering right, Greg? 16 feet. 16 feet fell from scaffolding and, and broke the bones in his feet, injured his knees. He hasn't been able to work for 18 months. And surgery after surgery after surgery. And you guys, this has been a dark season, hasn't it? It's been a dark season. But it has been my joy to watch the two of you choose joy. And those of you that know them know they have chosen joy. And they have chosen to grab onto the promise that Jesus is gonna show up for us. There have been days, haven't there, Tosh, that, that it was so tough and the faith was so difficult to keep walking out and the joy was hard fought, but you guys have chosen joy in the midst of the struggle and you guys are making it. In fact, Tosh shared with me this week, she said, oh my gosh, he showed up. Oh my gosh, he came. It reminded me of, oh come, oh come, amen. We're waiting, Jesus, we're waiting. And oh my gosh, he came, right? And it's because hope comes from Jesus. And my friends, no matter where you're at in your life tonight, I want you to know, Jesus will show up. Jesus will show up for you. Tonight, on this night, there is good news of great joy. Say it with me. Good news of great joy. You know what? This is why Isaac Watts wrote Joy to the World 300 years ago. This is why Handel wrote the Hallelujah Chorus 400 years ago. And this is why tonight we sing. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Come 